Good afternoon, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and I'm joined by Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins as we give you our weekly update on uh, Westchester County issues focused on the coronavirus outbreak and uh, perhaps some other issues of value. This is Monday, June 14th, it's Flag Day. We're going to uh, recognize that as we close out our report. Uh, but just to remind everybody that we are now bringing a report once a week, Mondays at 2 o'clock, in which we give you an idea of where we are with the COVID infection and our vaccination efforts, and then some other information that we think is important. Today we're going to talk about our tourism and film efforts, and we have Natasha Caputo, who's director of our Tourism and Film uh, Bureau, who's going to be with us here, and uh, she's going to be able to update you on some interesting areas along those lines. First, let me begin with the numbers, as we always do. The New York State tracker is up today, which gives us our information. And uh, the infection rate of uh, uh, COVID virus has been dropping dramatically now uh, for the last couple of months, and it continues to drop to record lows. As of today, Monday, June 14th, we have reported 270 active cases of coronavirus. That number is the lowest that we've seen since the very beginning of the pandemic in uh, March of 2020. In fact, uh, probably in the first three or four days of the pandemic, we blew through 200 some odd active cases uh, in, our, uh, in our peak situation. Uh, if you want to look just a month ago, not even back to January where we had 11,000 cases, which I often reference, just one month ago today, and the numbers had been dropping through uh, April into May, on May 14th, we had 1,100 active cases of COVID. And we were pleased that that number had gotten down to 1,100. And now today it's down to 270. We think that's great progress, definitely moving in the right direction. Uh, we have suffered 2,290 fatalities. Uh, that number's five above what we were a week ago. And in the last couple of nights, we've had nights of uh, two individuals passing away. Uh, prior to that, we had gone almost a week without any fatalities, but we mourn with those families that have lost loved ones. And uh, we hope that uh, with each passing day, we have zero fatalities, so we can point to that with some degree of confidence that we're moving in the right direction. At present, we have 22 people hospitalized for COVID county, countywide. That number is the lowest number we've had, again, since the initial uh, expansion of the, of the uh, infection. And if you want to go back to a month ago, <clears throat> where we have 22 people hospitalized. Today, a month ago, we had 67 people hospitalized. And hospitalizations and fatalities represent the depth of the infection. Just to give you an idea in terms of the number of people uh, that have been tested yesterday, we tested 3,136 people. Only 12 tested positive for COVID. So that means 3,124 people who tested out of 3,136 tested negative. That is a sign of the diminution of the disease. Now, we are not the CDC nor the New York State Health Department. <clears throat> We're not going to wave any flags and proclaim anything. But these numbers are extremely encouraging, and they show that the vaccinations work that the more people are vaccinated, the less likely they are to get the disease. And with the testing that's going on now, and we've tested almost 3 million tests in Westchester County. We have a population in the vicinity of a million people. So if we've had 3 million tests, that means people in Westchester County have been tested multiple times. I've been tested three times. So the, uh, the bottom line is with that many tests out there, that number of infection is dropping with each passing day, and that's all very encouraging. 270 active cases, 22 hospitalizations uh, to date, uh, big compar positive comparisons to where we were a month ago. On the vaccination side, the operative number that New York State is now using, and we will use this as well as, as the uh, uh, correlation number, is what percentage of your population, 18 years of age and older, have had at least one vaccine dose? Now, one vaccine dose is not the full inoculation, but it's a significant step in the right direction. And another presumption that if you're taking either Moderna or Pfizer, you will have the second uh, uh, dose. It, it's really been a surprisingly high percentage of people that haven't gotten the first dose do, go, in fact, go back and get the second dose. And of course, one dose also covers the Johnson & Johnson product, which is a one-dose product. So the operative number by the state is all those 18 years of age and older, have you had at least one dose? In Westchester County, we have 74.8% of our population just shy of 75% of all the people in Westchester County, 18 years of age and older, have been vaccinated at least once, and quite a lot of them 
uh, well over 60 percent of them have gotten the second dose, but 74.8. What's important about that is when you look at the different counties in New York State, only Nassau County has a, a slightly higher percentage rate. We are ahead of our, our fellow counties in the Hudson Valley. We're ahead of each of the four boroughs, major boroughs of New York. We're ahead of Suffolk County as a percentage of vaccination. We don't personally take credit for it as the administration of government. We think it reflects the fact that we've made an honest effort and the people of Westchester have responded. So to the extent that we are at that percentage of vaccination, that we think is the single biggest, largest reason why we have such a diminution in the amount of infection. It's a very encouraging number. And vaccinations can only rise. You can only vaccinate more people as we go along. There's been an effort made in the last four weeks to vaccinate those under the age of 18, primarily those under the age of 16 who are now eligible uh, for vaccinations. But in those cases, when you're under the age of 18, you can't make the decision yourself. You have to have parental approval. So there's a little bit of a different process. 18 and over is a more clear example of people making the decision themselves to be vaccinated. And I'm not sure what the numbers are going to look like statewide. The governor will make some announcement, I think, within the next 24 hours about the statewide number and what's happening in other states of the nation. Of course, we'll find out as we listen to the national news. But to say that we are now, as before we reach the middle of the year in, in June, and the first vaccinations came in January, that we're almost in the middle of June, uh, pardon me, the end of the year, end of the month of June, middle of the year, that we have reached almost 75 percent vaccination here in Westchester County is really a tremendous accomplishment, which everybody should take some credit for. As we look forward, we certainly continue to operate the county center. That's over 300,000 vaccinations uh, administered. Uh, the Yonkers Armory, which was originally run, run by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency, was taken over by New York State. They have uh, exceeded 70,000 vaccinations authored and are much smaller clinics, both the uh, community college gymnasium and uh, our White Plains Clinic continuing on uh, as uh, exceeded 55,000 vaccinations. So we've been able to do a tremendous job in those set locations. And then we have had a, a, an innumerable number of satellite or pop-up uh, designations. And now going back over months where we've done uh, locations all across the county from Yorktown in the north to New Rochelle in the south, uh, we've been able to add a number of people that way. Uh, this week we have a pop-up uh, at, on Thursday at Yonkers Middle High School, 150 Rockland Avenue. And of course, we've been going into schools lately to try to reach the larger cohort of unvaccinated people who were willing to take a vaccine, and that's young people who are in school 18 or under the age of 18. And now the Pfizer vaccine for the last few weeks have been eligible for those 12 to 16. Other uh, vaccines are waiting FDA approval, and those come down the line will be there. But uh, we also have walk-in vaccinations now at our White Plains Health Clinic. White Plains Health Clinic has been administering vaccinations since the very beginning of the uh, pandemic uh, vaccination period, which began in January, and uh, it continues to provide that advantage. So now if you're at a point where you want a vaccination, you can get one very easily. There's walk-in opportunities. You can certainly make it by appointment, as you will. But uh, we think what, what you're watching, if you, if you did the following of how we've d uh, developed over the last six months, is really uh, an impressive result of Americans with freedom and independence deciding what was in their best health interest and deciding that these vaccinations, to the greater extent, would protect them against this disease. And this disease, which has claimed 2,280 people in Westchester County alone and hundreds of thousands nationwide. So um, the once a week update on COVID now we think is a reasonable update. The news continues to be good. We have heard what you have heard about variations, the Delta variation, we're, we're monitoring it. Uh, Dr. Charlita Amla, who is our Commissioner of Health, and her team of professionals, both uh, medical uh, doctors as well as nurses, are watching to see what happens. If we have to take additional steps to deal with the variant, we will. But uh, all the reports that we have is that any of the variants, Delta and others, make the disease more communicable. It does not make it more severe. And it also does not mean that the existing vaccines are ineffective in dealing with the variant. It just means that the variant is, is more likely to break through. But that doesn't mean that we're going to see an uptick in the amount of infections. And if we have 12 out of 3,000, we think that's a good sign. We hope that will be to continue the good news that we have. So we have good news in other areas of public policy that we want to share with you today. And uh, I have with me uh, two, of, two fine individuals who are both going to give you an update. Both Natasha and uh, Brittany are working tremendously in our area of tourism and film. I'm going to have um, uh, the introductions from Natasha 
of Brittany, but we're very happy to have both of them here to give us an update on uh, what's happening in this area. Westchester County is a hot destination. We're right next door to New York City. There's lots of film production that comes out of New York City looking for certain kind of venues, and we're right there to be able to do it. And in addition to that, as, as I hope you know, we have so many wonderful venues in Westchester County for tourism purposes, whether you're in the county and want to tour elsewhere in the county, or if you're in the city, coming into the city, and you want to come up to the Hudson Valley. Just this weekend, we hosted the uh, uh, the Westminster uh, Kettle Show at Lyndhurst. Uh, I'm not sure that it was ever outside of uh, Madison Square Garden, but we had it here in Westchester County. So, Natasha Caputo, our Director of Film and Tourism, thank you very much for being here. And Brittany, please come up and take it away. All right, great. Well, thank you. Uh, we are ready to be on the move again. Uh, with the increased vaccine doses, the declining cases, and the warmer weather, this spring brings fresh optimism and a pent-up demand to travel. Leisure travel is leading the way to recovery and rebound. And that's why we are focusing and creating this new initiative, Go Beyond Without Going Far. And partnering with our various communities, each one having something very unique to offer. Our new tourism initiative, Go Beyond Without Going Far, is an extension of our existing Beyond campaign. It is designed to unite the county to promote our local flair. And this is a call to our local partners to help move Westchester forward. We're creating Beyond Templated Materials with the Go Beyond Without Going Far tagline, which overlays an image that identifies a unique Westchester community by name. White Plains is our first and featured partner, and Brittany Brandwine, Executive Director of the White Plains Bid, will share how they're rolling out their campaign. Each municipality and community partner curates itineraries and fresh new content to engage our locals and regional visitors to explore Westchester. Available to each participating municipality will be a toolkit with detailed information, how to participate, how to promote your local community, digital assets, social media, newsletters, websites. This unified message and collaboration unites our communities to increase our frequency and visibility for Westchester County. We have everything that our visitors would want to take advantage of. And it is my pleasure to introduce Brittany Brandwine, the Executive Director of the White Plains Bid. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, and thank you, George. Uh, we are so pleased to be here as the representing the White Plains Business Improvement District and be the template and spearhead of this Beyond campaign with the county. Um, as the heart and the seat of the county of Westchester, White Plains has so much to offer, whether you wanna stay and play, whether you work, visit, whether you wanna move here, you can go to Westchester, to White Plains and beyond. We have just launched our website of wpbid.com backslash staycation. And we had originally planned our uh, program as the Staycation White Plains. When Natasha shared with me that um, this has potential to go further and go beyond. Uh, and I couldn't agree more. So we are absolutely honored to have the county behind us to help and the beautiful city of White Plains as our backdrop. Um, the Staycation White Plains information can be seen on WPBID.com. Now we have some itineraries up already two fabulous hotels in the heart of downtown White Plains at two different price points. And again, you could stay and go further, stay and enjoy White Plains or all of Westchester County, which we are linked to the Westchester County website to see those opportunities. Um, you would choose a stay, an eat, and a play. So it makes it very easy for you to choose your um, your experience of a staycation or a local vacation. There is an attraction to just come into your home or just get a change of pace or to visit this beautiful Westchester County. And we also launched our dining guide, 
which is the 2021 Dining Guide in White Plains bid. It's interactive and digital this year. We typically print, but have gone contactless. And you can see nearly 100 different restaurants in downtown White Plains, sort them by price point, by cuisine, and find anything you'd like to do there. So you can find all of that at WPBID.com. And again, we are so thankful to go forward and beyond together. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Natasha and Brittany, thank you very much for your uh, uh, talented um, creation of a, of a way to package the great assets, both of the county and of the city of White Plains. Please uh, project to all of our friends in the city of White Plains how much we love being in White Plains every day as we work <laughs> here and uh, the great uh, uh, dining options and attractions that link us together. Natasha, thank you for your leadership okay. in this area. Thank you both. Again, Natasha Caputo, Director of Tourism and Film for Westchester County, and uh, Brittany Brandwine, who is the uh, Executive Director of the White Plains BID, which stands for Business Improvement District. And uh, we have, uh, we're fortunate to have a, a BID in White Plains. We have one in New Rochelle, one in part of Yonkers as well. Uh, we also have a linkage with many of the Chambers of Commerce around, uh, which have a little bit of a different footprint than a BID does. But the bottom line is, uh, Natasha's vision of these things, which we were working on, is to try to work with each community, given the assets of those communities, in a partnership. You've seen many of our municipal partners come here, the village mayors, the city mayors, and the town supervisors uh, as part of this. And we think this is the best way to project Westchester, to do it together with you. So thank you again, Brittany and Natasha. Thank you for your leadership. So uh, we now are in a, a period of early voting before primary season. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, not many years ago, New York State made the decision to have a single primary date because for a while we had a June primary date for congressional and senatorial campaigns, and we had a September primary date for local campaigns, which, uh, you know, was confusing and expensive for us to do. So that was consolidated uh, into a date in June a couple of years ago, and we also uh, had the state uh, imposed, uh, created uh, early voting opportunities for people. So Ken and I are going to do this jointly, uh, covering the ground of uh, when and uh, at what time and then where early voting is possible and then what happens after early voting. So uh, Ken, you can take the first leadership and then I'll follow from there. Awesome. And uh, for everyone, early voted started in New York State this past Saturday. And you can vote at any one of the 23 voting locations that um, the county executive is going to mention in just a minute. The hours are different every day. So Monday today is from 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. Tuesday tomorrow, midnight, midnight noon to 8 p.m. So noon to 8 p.m. New York City could go up to midnight, but that's only on the last day. On Wednesday, we're going to go back to 8 to 4. Thursday, noon to 8. And Friday, 8 to 4. Saturday and Sunday are from noon to 5. Um, and again, there's 23 different locations. And you can vote at any one of them. And, you know, if you're working during the day and you don't get off work until 5, what Ken's just highlighted is there are a couple of specific days of the week, this Tuesday, tomorrow, and Thursday, where you can vote if you have to work at 5. Uh, if you have something that uh, represents an early start to the day, you can vote as early as 8 a.m. on, uh, on uh, Wednesday coming up and Friday coming up. So there's some flexibility that, of course, on the weekend days. Important to note that early voting ends uh, this coming Sunday. And then Monday, there will be no voting, early or otherwise, before we get to Tuesday, which Ken will cover in a second. Now, there are 23 different locations. That's up six from what we had last year. Last year, we had 17 early voting sites in Westchester County. These sites are determined by the Westchester County Board of Elections. The Board of Elections uh, is not a direct uh, uh, control of the county ex uh, executive administration nor of the Board of Legislators. They operate under direction from the State Board of Elections, and they're given the discretion to establish as many local voting sites as is possible. So they've been expanded this year. You can vote, as Ken said, at any one of these sites. You might live in one part of the county or work in a different part of the county. You can vote where you work. You can vote where you live. When you go to the uh, the desk to check in, you'll identify your residential address, and they have the capacity to print out a ballot that reflects those people on the ballot in your jurisdiction. Ken lives in the city of Yonkers. I live in the city of Rye. There's a certain number of races in the city of Yonkers. There's a race in the city of Rye, and then there is one countywide race. 
But you, uh, so you're able, though, to have that ballot printed out that's appropriate for you at any of these locations. I also might add that uh, you'll want to look to see what competitions exist, what primaries exist. We're not going to cover that in this governmental forum. Uh, you can find that through the League of Women Voters. You can find that through the Board of Elections information. Uh, it's certainly in, in general uh, newspapers, publications. And if you look in your mailbox, I'm sure you'll find something there that <laughs> talks about what's coming. We tend to do that when we're in campaigns for office. Um, so you have to determine what is the nearest location to you for early voting for the dates that Ken just said. Here's some of the locations. In Eastchester at the Eastchester Public Library, in Dobbs Ferry at Village Hall, in the town of Greenberg at Greenberg Town Hall, in Harrison at St. Gregory the Great's Church on Halstead, in Mamaronick, both the village and the town at Mamaronick Town Center, in Mount Kisco at the Memorial Complex at Leonard Park, in Mount Pleasant at the Community Center, uh, in Ossining at the Caputo Community Center downtown, in Poundridge at the Poundridge Townhouse, which is where the town government is based, in the village of Rye Brook, which also covers a section of Rye Town, at the Firehouse on King Street, right next door to the Village Hall, in Somers at Somers Townhouse, and that is the seat of town government in Somers. Um, in uh, Yorktown, there are two locations, the Jefferson Village Annex on Hill Boulevard and the Yorktown Cultural Center right in downtown on Commerce Street in Yorktown. There are two locations in the city of Mount Vernon, on the south side at the Dole Center on South 6th Avenue and slightly above the tracks, therefore, north side of Mount Vernon, really downtown Mount Vernon, at Mount Vernon City Hall on Roosevelt Square. In New Rochelle, there are two locations, the City Hall Annex on Beaufort Place, which is behind the main entrance to City Hall on North Avenue. Beaufort Place is the backside of City Hall. And also at the United Methodist Church, 1200 North Avenue in New Rochelle. In Peekskill, they have two locations. The Peekskill Nutrition Center at the Neighborhood Center, the, the library field library is located in the same area, 4 Nelson Avenue, downtown Peekskill, right opposite Peekskill City Hall. And at the Peekskill Lincoln Depot Museum, which is uh, on Water Street, right down closer to the train station. You can vote uh, here in White Plains at the Westchester County Board of Elections Headquarters, 25 Quaropus Street, which is right nearby. And Yonkers, of course, our largest community with the greatest population, has three locations that you can vote in. The, uh, the Riverfront Library, the main branch of the library down on Larkin Center, right by the Yonkers train station on the west side of town. Uh, on the east side of town, the Will Library, Grinton Will Library on Central Park Avenue, just south of Tuckahoe Road. That's an early voting site. And then the No Dine Hill Community Center on Fillmore Street is also an early voting center. You can vote at any of these locations. Wherever you are, you give me your address, um, and uh, they'll be able to identify uh, exactly uh, the ballot for you. And that will register you as, as having voted already. So if you appear at some other location, you'll be rejected because you've already been listed as having voted, and that includes what happens on Election Day. So now we'll talk a little bit about uh, what happens thereafter. And, and then we get to the 22nd, as George just mentioned, that's actual primary day. Um, the voting times and locations are sent to you to come to you through your mailbox. But unlike early voting, you must use your assigned polling location on primary day. The polls are going to be open starting at 6 a.m., going right to 9 p.m. You could confirm your polling site by going to the New York State Board of Elections website. I'm sure that we're putting it up on the screen or the Westchester County Board of Elections site um, that's at citizenparticipation.westchestergov.com. You should have definitely received that postcard in the mail from the Westchester County Board of Elections with the name and address of your primary day polling site. You certainly can call and speak to the Westchester County Board of Elections at 995-5700. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. And of course, um, you know, for those of us who serve in public office, we you know, live uh, and die with elections and uh, the choices of people in terms of different positions. We know that last year was the year of the presidential election, and there's, there's no election like the presidential election. Uh, the dialogue, the debate in the society is tremendous. Last year's was a very controversial election season, and so everybody focused on it. But there are, there are other positions 
that are being competed for every year from school board elections, some places have fire districts and library districts uh, where there's elections. This year is primarily a year of local elections for county government, town government, city government, and some villages that have November elections. But they are important. The people who serve in these positions make decisions that affect you. It affects you in terms of the services they provide, police, fire, sanitation, recreation. They affect you in your wallet based on the kind of property taxation that you may have, uh, and they affect the quality of life of the community that you live in. So uh, while the presidential election is really, you know, the centerpiece of everybody's focus, uh, what happens in your community, and at, and at a primary day, who runs in which political parties that will compete in November. New York State's law uh, requires that you must be a registered member of the political party to vote in that particular primary. Different states have different rules. New York State, you must be a registered member, so you must be a registered Republican to vote in a Republican primary, Democrat, a Democratic primary, conservative or working families. Those are the four set policies, uh, pardon me, four set parties that are established for the next uh, cycle of years, and uh, you have to be a registered member of those parties. You cannot register in a party on primary day, so your uh, primary vote will count uh, if you're already a member of that political party and you vote between now and Sunday, early voting, or if you vote on primary day on the 22nd, which is a week from tomorrow. I'm gonna to close out our report today uh, by wishing everybody a happy Flag Day. Today, the, the American flag turns 244 years of age. Uh, this has been celebrated ever since the flag was adopted on this date, June 14th, in 1777, by resolution of the Second Continental Congress. That resolution said, resolved, that the flag of the 13 United States shall be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that a union be 13 stars, white and a blue field, representing a new constellation. Now, the flag is a symbol of the United States, and as a, as a symbol, it has been planted in times of uh, war conflict to show that the, that the presence of the United States of America had uh, achieved success in battle in a war. The Star Spangled Banner, we talk about, do you see the flag on the battle for Fort McHenry uh, outside of Baltimore? That's what that, from the War of 1812. The flag has become a symbol for some people of things that they're not happy with in the United States of America. But, but I believe, I think we believe, that the United States is a great country and it can be greater. It's made greater by what we do to improve it, to reform it, to change things, and to make it better. But that the intrinsic nature of this country allows for that change, that it allows for that growth. And therefore, the flag, to me, symbolizes something that's positive, not something that's negative. This is a free country. There's a diversity of opinions on things, and we debate them, and we have elections to prove that. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade having been born here in the United States for uh, any other country. I'm very proud of my heritage from other uh, lands, and we all trace back to some other place. But right now in this country, we have the freedom and the ability to interact through what we do every day, a better United States of America. And so today we wish the flag a happy birthday. We hope that you'll vote. We hope that you'll engage in civic activity in your community. We hope you do some tourism. And if you have some discretionary money, you spend it in the right places. Let's get this economy going up. We hope that the decrease in infection, the increase in vaccinations makes us more able to interact in the society. Uh, we are given a very limited time on this planet. Each of us uh, knows not how long we have. Let us try to make this day and the next day the best days that we can. I'm George Latimer. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we will see you, I guess, a week from today officially for an update. And we may see you during the week as we have other announcements. Thanks for watching and have a good day.